In 2018, I'm hoping to see Fox's live valve suspension system coming out onto the mass market. We've seen rumours, we've seen photos, we've even seen a few bikes that are already equipped to take the technology when it comes. The idea is that a small sensor picks up impacts through the fork and within thousandths of a second tells the rear shock to open or close its compression damping circuit, meaning that the bike automatically adjusts to the terrain you're riding for better pedaling and yet still active suspension. We suspect it's going to be obviously very expensive and pretty exclusive and obviously there's a lot of people who don't want electronics on their bikes but it's been rumoured for a few years now and we think it might make an appearance in 2018. Looking forward to 2018, one of the bikes that I'm quite keen to have a go on is the new Cube Sting. Now the old Cube Sting did really well in our 2017 Women's Mountain Bike of the Year testing. So I'm intrigued to see what updates they've made for the new version and how that bike rides. We've got 2018 Bike of the Year testing coming up, so it'll be interesting to see how the Cube Sting with its updates does this year. So last year I had a Bianchi Methanol cross-country race bike as my long-term test bike. I'm hoping I'm going to get to do a bit more cross-country mountain bike racing next year. I'm hopefully going to be doing that on board of a Nikolai Saturn. Unlike most cross-country bikes, the Nikolai's definitely embraced that new trend flavour for long and slack bikes. So although it's built around a very XC-friendly 100mm travel, it's still got that super, super long reach and super slack head angle that we're seeing more commonly on trail and enduro bikes. So even though it's not going to be the lightest being made of aluminium, I think for me, as I'm never going to be the best climber in the world, it'll save me a huge amount of time in the descent, I hope, uh, and flatter my skills a little bit. Next year, I'm really looking forward to riding my new long-term bike, which is a specialised S-Works Epic hardtail. In 2017, I did all my marathon racing and XC racing on my long-term Cannondale Scalpel, which is a full suspension bike. It was a really cool bike and amazing on the descents, but I found on the climbs, when I was really on the limit, sometimes I still felt like having the extra weight of the suspension wasn't really benefiting me. I was, I was suffering badly. Obviously being a hardtail, I'm going to be a little bit slower on the descents compared to the full suspension scalpel. But hopefully with that two kilo weight saving, I'm going to be way faster on the climbs and in theory that's going to make me quicker overall. Being an S-Works means that it's got a very Gucci spec, so there's not too many upgrades I can immediately see that I want to make. But one I definitely do want to make is the 100mm stem which feels way too long for me, so I'm going to be sticking on something like a 70 or an 85mm soon. In 2018, I'm looking forward to seeing more electronic integration come to market. Fox's live valve has already been developed, but not quite to market yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that's applied. I'm also looking forward to more electronic groups from Shimano. It's about time we saw a new XTR DI2 group, and I'm hopeful they'll embrace 1x12 drivetrains. Will this be the year that Shimano commits instead of losing market share? I sure hope so. In 2018, I'm really excited to be able to ride the Structure Cycleworks SCW1. What makes this bike different is the fact that it uses a linkage fork instead of a telescopic sliding fork. On paper, this has a few different advantages. Because it uses bearings and linkages instead of uh, sliding stanchions, you get less issues with friction and binding. Also, because when the suspension compresses, the axle doesn't move backwards as much as a telescopic fork does, where the axle path is defined by the head angle. That means you should get much less diving under braking, so the geometry is, is, is conserved. Also, the head angle actually gets slacker as the suspension compresses. Structure Cycle Works are certainly not the first to experiment with linkage forks on mountain bikes, but the theory makes a lot of sense to me, so I'm really excited to try it out for myself. A few months ago, we got our hands on the GoPro Hero 6 Black. Unfortunately, we didn't have it for too long, so I'm looking forward to getting one back in to give it a proper testing. On first use, we were thoroughly impressed by just how good the picture quality looked. As a cyclist, I'm really keen to see what this camera can actually do, but as a videographer for Bike Radar, I'm really interested to see how it can fit into our daily workflow. Hint, hint, GoPro.